So uh, there's, there's still stuff like that going on, but the American people need to understand if that reconciliation do bill does passes or doesn't pass, it doesn't make a difference. The destruction to this country, the destruction to the Constitution has been done and is, and is being voted on as we speak. Oh, boy, what prophetic uh, words from uh, our next guest, Tom DeLay. That was back uh, as they were voting on Obamacare uh, back in 2009. And we say hello to uh, former Congressman from Texas, Tom DeLay, the former House uh, Majority Leader. Good to talk to you, Congressman, as always. It's great to talk to you, Steve. I hate to tell you I told you so, yeah. but... <laughs> you, you did, and uh, you were right, and uh, it is horrific. But, but I want you to listen to Nancy Pelosi today, who was asked about the recent election in Florida and how that might affect Democrats uh, uh, running uh, on, for or on or away from uh, Obamacare going forward. And listen to what she said through, uh, obviously, uh, uh, ro at least rose-colored glasses. Here is uh, the next cut. I'm, I'm very proud of our House Democrats and how they have not only embraced the Affordable Care Act, because they helped create it, uh, but how proud they are of it. Uh, they, I think that the Republicans are wasting their time using that as their electoral issue, and they will find that out. <laughs> what do you say to that one? Well, that's as stupid as when she said, we've got to pass it before we got, can see what's in it. Uh, I mean, that's just, nobody believes that. Um, I think the elections have already been set, unless the Republicans screw it up, uh, and, and the Democrats continue to help. I mean, every month, every week, something new comes out with the Obamacare and the disaster it is, the da disaster, the rollout, the fact that the government, uh, the Obama administration can't even implement it. Uh, they've got to bring all the politics into it. Um, it just shows you that uh, when you do something that violates the Constitution, this is the, the, these are the consequences. Yeah, and again, you know, we, we got another uh, another unilateral uh, declaration from Obama that uh, the rollout or the, the employer mandate is going to be delayed. Uh, you know, there was a vote in the House today that, of, of course, is going to go nowhere in the Senate that the uh, the mandate, the uh, individual employer mandate should be delayed or the, the employer mandate should be delayed uh, on, for the next 10 years. <laughs> and it passed uh, along party lines, strict party lines, but, of course, that's never going to happen. What, what, what do you see happening? Well, wait a minute, yeah, wait yeah. a minute. It wasn't, it wasn't strict party lines. This is, I, you can see that the Republicans are crumbling. I think they had about two dozen votes for that bill uh, today from the Democrats. Okay. Uh, and, and other votes they've been taking on Obamacare, at least over the last few weeks, they're picking up 24, 30 votes from the Democrats. That, that tells me that it's crumbling, and it's crumbling badly. Yeah, well, something else that's crumbling, unfortunately, um, is what's going on in Ukraine. We had uh, John Kerry today, and uh, John Kerry um, uh, t talked about uh, a six-hour meeting with his counterpart from Russia, and uh, he told him that uh, there's a better way out of this, uh, that they understand there are legitimate concerns that Russia has and, and claims uh, to Ukraine, historical and otherwise. Uh, but uh, that election that's coming up uh, on Sunday is not the answer, that they should stop massing troops along the uh, Ukrainian border or there'll be real consequences. Um, what, 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 what's the way out of this, and is there a way out of this, and what's going to happen? What, what, he, what he didn't say is uh, the foreign minister of Russia, Lavrov, probably told him to go jump in a lake. <laughs> uh, I mean, this whole thing is just a farce. Number one, I have no confidence whatsoever that Obama nor Kerry know what uh, what they're doing. Uh, they have no sense of history. They 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 don't know who makes up the opposition or those that t took over the the government in Ukraine. They're not telling the American people the truth. Uh, this this is this is just dangerous and and crazy. I mean, um, I I don't know what the answer is. Uh, but I do know that Ukraine was spun off after the Soviet Union broke down. And remember that after World War II, the Ukraine and the Crimea were formed. Once again, the international community forms a country that has no sense of community or who the people are in the country. They, they took the Crimea, which is nothing but Russians that live in the Crimea, stuck it into the, the Ukraine, and the, the Crimea has been been um, 
uh, ruled by a minority or, or the, the majority in the Ukraine and the minority in the Crimea, which has kept the Russians all hot and mad uh, the entire time. And I could go on and on. The, the history is unbelievable. Plus, we have a treaty with Ukraine in 1994 uh, that basically says we will be their ally and, and protect them when they're attacked, which puts us in a, in a particular box because our word needs to be good and solid. Uh, and so now, um, what do we do? Especially in light of the fact that nobody in the entire world, no country in the entire world respects us, and certainly don't respect the president or the secretary of state. Uh, it's a mess. It's a holy mess. Yeah. Uh, let me let me uh, let you hear something that uh, Lindsey Graham said yesterday. Didn't know the mic was uh, open after John Kerry uh, addressed the Senate uh, about uh, aid to Ukraine and the whole situation. Uh, and this is something that the House has been very uh, you know very uh, reluctant reluctant to bring up. Uh, he he offered help. Uh, with Boehner. Let's give a listen, see if you can make this out before an, uh, an uh, open mic that Lindsey Graham did not know was hot. This is uh, cut number eight. Hey, John, good job. Let me know what I can do to help you with Boehner. <laughs> Let me, he walks up to him, whispers in his ear, let me know what I could do to help you with Boehner. No, first, first he said, John, a good job. Good job, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So, is that, so tell me of how common that is and what, what Graham would then do, do you think, having certainly been in, 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 in the leadership, uh, what would Graham then do to, to, if Kerry said, yeah, yeah, please, what, 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 what's the next step for Graham? Well, I, I, Graham is supporting everything the Obama administration is doing, including the bailout of Ukraine and, and uh, sending military equipment to them. And, and he's, you know, he and uh, John McCain, once again, uh, they think they're the foreign uh, ministers of, of the United States are out there uh, with their necks stuck way out uh, about what we should be doing in Ukraine. And uh, he, he needs John Kerry as his buddy right now um, for two reasons. One, he's running for re-election in South Carolina, and I hear he's having a little problem down there. And two, um, uh, I, I guess he thinks he's real close buddies with uh, John Boehner, the Speaker of the House. So... <laughs> It's uh, it's typical, uh, typical, and and once again, he's going against what the other Republicans in the Senate uh, think should be done. Um, it's it's a it's a real mess. <laughs> it, it is a real mess. Um, let me ask you about uh, the um, uh, the the election that took place in Florida. As we get back get back domestically for the final two minutes here. Um, yep. Do you believe uh, you know we had uh, certainly. Uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz saying the Republicans didn't, it was, it was disappointment for them. I guess she's now speaking for them, too, that they didn't do as well as they should have. Uh, Herman Cain actually concurred with that, said the Republican candidate under the circumstances should have won by more. But there are a lot of factors that point to the fact that uh, this was a, a huge victory uh, by, the, uh, by the Republican candidate. Jolly, what, what do you think? Well, I've known Bill Young for 30 years, uh, that, and he served in that seat for 40 years. And that seat has, yes, been held by a Republican, but it is one of the uh, most swing districts in America. And only Bill Young could have held on that district for that long. It's always been a swing district, and so the votes have always been close. Uh, this vote, in my mind, wasn't close. You add the six points that the Libertarian got to, to what Jolly the Republican got, and that's a huge victory in this particular district. Uh, so uh, the national media and Nancy Pelosi are trying to convince the American people, oh, this doesn't mean anything, this doesn't mean anything. This is a huge signal of what's to come in the, in the midterm elections. Yeah. All right. Uh, Congressman, great to talk to you. Look forward to our next conversation, so thank you. Thank you, Steve. Tom you Dele be good now. You too. Uh, Tom DeLay, ladies and gentlemen, former uh, majority uh, leader of the uh, House of Representatives, former congressman from the great state of Texas. A uh, lot, of, lot, of, lot of great lines there. You know, I, I pull lines. I, that's what I do. I listen, I write down, I pull the lines. Uh, the Ukraine situation is a holy mess. Uh, the foreign minister of Russia probably told Kerry to jump in the lake. Um, McCain and Graham, he says, uh, think that they're the foreign ministers of the U.S. And Nancy Pelosi's remarks uh, on uh, being proud of Obamacare were stupid. So, <laughs> I mean, that's four, that's four headlines coming from that one interview. Not bad. Not bad at all.